Um, yeah, the video, the video is great. They played that video uh, at the Grand Chefs Gala back in um, early February this year, uh, before the the shutdown, when we still got the party over at the Field Museum, and that is um, probably the biggest event the foundation does every year. It's a wonderful black tie event. And they always highlight a family, um, and uh, they they chose to do uh, the story of Mikey and Dylan, and it was. Uh, it was really great. It was such a cool moment that night because uh, Mikey, uh, I mean, Dylan, excuse me, in addition to being a great gymnast, is also um, uh, a young Picasso. He's, he's really creative and inventive in uh, painting. And he did a painting for the auction. And my brother and my sister-in-law were up there as part of the live, uh, part of the live bid. And uh, the, the, after that video, I think it tugs on the heartstrings a little. And, uh, the scene that ensued, people bidding on a, at the time, what, he had just turned 11, uh, an 11 year old's piece of art. Um, if I told you the price, you might not believe it, but it was north of $20,000 that somebody paid. It was just incredible. So, Tony, are you, does your sound work? I don't know. You yeah, tell me. Oh, there, there you go. Is go. that better? Yeah, well, I, first of all, I, I appreciate the, uh, the call out from Justin Riva. That's always, always great. Um, so thank you for that. But, um, Anyways, glad that that's working again. And again, what I was trying to say is uh, I just wanted to thank everybody once again for being here tonight um, and acknowledge that, uh, as that was perfect evidence, this is not our ideal environment to host a bourbon and bacon event. Um, Got to love technology, but I think we can all relate to the uncertainty 2020 has brought. Um, so we're just super pumped that everybody could be here together tonight, at least virtually. Um, I think, uh, you know, the one message I wanted to share is, as was, you know, evident from the video, there is a deeper, uh, greater purpose to tonight's event uh, beyond just the amazing food and drinks. And I will say that that Boulevardier looked fantastic as well. But um, beyond that, all of the funds raised from Age to Perfection go directly to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, whose sole mission is to find a cure for everybody living with CF. Um, and that includes my nephews, Mikey and Dylan. So I, I acknowledge and realize everyone is coming here tonight uh, at a different, uh, a different place in their lives. And, and we all can, can acknowledge the uncertainty and, and craziness that this year has brought. However, um, I just wanna take a moment and ask you to stop and think about my nephews. Think about everybody that is out there living with CF. Um, and, you know, there's a link being placed into the chat function uh, where you can actually go and make a donation. And I would just get, ask if you can, if possible, um, any gift is greatly appreciated. Um, even something small, as small as $6.50, which is a great uh, acknowledgement and honor to the foundation's 65th anniversary this year. Um, anything makes a huge difference. So thank you once again for being here. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Hopefully this works, passing it off. Um, I'm gonna invite Stuart to come on up and actually say a couple of words if he wants to pop on. Yes, your donations do make a difference. My name is Stuart Feldman, and I have been active in the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation since my niece Stacy was diagnosed with CF. Stacy is also part of the 10%, along with Mikey and Dylan, that do not have a highly effective therapy that treats the underlying cause of CF. When Stacy was born, her parents were told not to expect her to live past the age of 18 years old. Now, as a result of years of fundraising and advances in CF care, Stacy recently celebrated her 34th birthday. Today, she is happily married and the proud mother of a healthy seven-month-old boy, Micah. We're so proud of Stacy. While Stacy has surpassed all odds, there's still no cure for CF. So pour yourself a shot of your favorite bourbon, which I'm doing right now. And let's have a toast to finding a cure for CF. Thank you for your support. And thank you to all of you for joining us tonight. My name is Jennifer McClary and I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at the age of seven days old. 
However, on November 16th, 2019, my life changed. I was fortunate enough that day to be able to begin taking Trikapta. I spend my days now with more energy and the ability to take in a deep breath without wheezing or coughing. It has truly been a miracle for both myself and my family. And while I am still one of the lucky ones, there are those that still need your donations to help them live with cystic fibrosis. As we've heard tonight, Michael, Dylan, Stacy, and others deserve a highly effective treatment as well. I am a living example of what your fundraising and research and how that will help us change lives. I want everyone to feel as blessed as I do. So thank you for your continued support of the mission that the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is doing to help make CF stand for Cure Found. Jen, thanks. Um, you rock, obviously. We're here for Jen and everybody that has CF, um, anybody that's lost someone because of CF. And uh, yeah, Cure Found is exactly right. That's why we're all doing this. So great stuff. Thanks for bearing with us, everybody, with some of the technical glitches. That's Zoom. Um, for, you know, like I said, next year, hopefully we're all back together. At Vinny's, uh, before I introduce our final guest, uh, and our speaker, I want to say that there's one other opportunity that uh, you can donate and you can do something in return tonight uh, if you are so interested. Uh, Tony was talking about the, the bid for a cure. You can click on that link. You'll probably get a follow-up follow email too. Later today or tomorrow, you can donate, like Anthony said, $6.50, 10 bucks, whatever. Uh, it, it all counts and it all matters. It really does. We've got um, something cool that we're doing too that we call Unlock the Cocktail. For 25 bucks, you can get the one and only Bill Curtis. Yep, yes, that Bill Curtis, uh, with a legendary Chicago uh, newsman. Uh, the uh, he does the voiceover for Anchorman. If you're wondering, wait, why do I know that name or that voice? He is the inspiration for Will Ferrell. Not like the boneheaded part of Will Ferrell, but the newsman part of Will Ferrell in Anchorman. So for 25 bucks, Bill Curtis uh, will deliver you a video on how to make a cocktail. And then for 50 bucks, by the way, these are 100% tax deductible. For 50 bucks, you'll receive the triple play. That's a video of me uh, doing my smoked old fashioned recipe, a video of Waddle uh, doing a cocktail, and you're gonna love Waddles, trust me, and a video of Yurko doing his famous swirl cocktail. It's a clockwise or counterclockwise swirl, I think. Um, so if you like to, if you think it's interesting, if you wanna donate a little and help out and uh, check out those videos, uh, feel free to do that again. 25 bucks, 50 bucks, you can get the triple play. Uh, very, very cool. And I will now turn it over to our final speaker of the night. Uh, I'm full on bourbon dork. I think most people that know me know that. Uh, when we found out that this gentleman would be able to join us, I got to admit, I was pretty, uh, pretty excited. Uh, this is his creation and his genius. This is uh, chapter two. He's on chapter four, I think, already. Um, the no family name within the bourbon world is legendary. Freddie No is the great, great grandson of Jim Beam himself. His grandfather, Booker No, uh, is a legend. And without his grandfather and uh, probably Jimmy Russell from Wild Turkey, bourbon might have died in the 80s if it wasn't for their efforts and their vision. Uh, I got to meet Freddie's dad a few years back, maybe five, six years ago at the radio station. Uh, Fred actually signed a bottle of Devil's Cut for me. So... I am a huge fan of all things Booker's and Knob and Baker's, and I think it's, uh, it's really awesome. And I'm going to pour myself some little book right now. I think it's really awesome to have Freddie No speak to us tonight. So, Freddie, I turn it over to you. All right. Uh, thank you. And, and thank you all for, for having me, and, and thanks for tuning in and listening tonight. Um, you know, I'm Freddie No, eighth-generation beam distiller. Uh, Jim Beam's great great grandson, or or I guess a lot of people say Booker knows grandson. Either either way, um, you know it's an honor for me uh, to get a chance to talk about bourbon. But it goes for a great cause. Um, it means a little bit more for me always. You know I'll never turn down that opportunity. So uh, when this came across the desk, I had some. Uh, they took my laptop this week and were were kind of regenerating it. There were some emails. Um, trying to get my confirmation, but I think, I think we finally got it today. Hopefully nobody lost any sleep over it, but i um, glad to be here. Um, and so tonight we'll talk about two products, um, Old Tub a little bit and Knob Creek. 
my grandfather Booker created Knob Creek um, in in the early '90s, and when essentially bourbon was really uh, almost to that death point. Um, and I, I guess when he created Knob Creek, it kind of rekindled the flame that allowed really the industry to grow into what happened today and, and be in this big uh, renaissance where um, I see a comment coming in, Booker's Rise 2.0. That's a possibility it could be coming. <laughs> uh, Booker's Rise, uh, one whiskey of the year for us. It's a release we did under the Booker's name, which is a, a cash strength bourbon. But the other product we're talking about is Old Tub, which is really cool as well, uh, because Old Tub was actually the first, I guess, bottled product our family sold. Uh, being the eighth generation of this, this family that has been distilling, um, we go back to 1795. So this year, 2020, you know, we would have had a big celebration. Uh, much like it seems as though you all have missed some of, some of your celebrations around uh, CF. So uh, it would have been our 225th anniversary of making whiskey this year. Uh, still is. You know, we'll keep going on. We'll keep making whiskey and we, we may celebrate next year. So, uh, but Old Tub, kind of to me, it, it's, a, it's a special release this year of a limited offer. And it's, like I said, the first whiskey that we sold in, I guess, in a named form. Before that, it was always just bean whiskey or or you know maybe even David M. Beam or Jake Beam whiskey, um, but before about 1880 or mid to late 1880s, there weren't a lot of quality marks. You know whether it be um, something that the government would guarantee is is good for you, um, or you know not gonna make you go blind. Um, that stuff didn't come around until the 1880s. So that's really when old tubs started to become extremely prominent for us. When it went from kind of hand selling and people bringing their jars to the distillery and often just getting filled up and kind of switched where we were sending bottles out. Uh, Old Tub really became the staple of the family up until Prohibition, which is when Jim Beam himself um, took over. And really, you know, that's why Jim Beam is selling bourbon. We kind of transitioned that to that name um, by his son in honor of his dad, Jim Beam, and a lot because, well, he survived the Great Depression. Um, he continued to make whiskey and keep our family going through, through that, through two world wars. <clears throat> and then also this little thing that, that kind of halted it called Prohibition that lasted 30 years. And so he came back at 70 years old, got the distillery up and running in 120 days. And really, it, to me, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys about this whiskey. Um, and it, that kind of really sparked the rest of, of the family's, uh, I guess, passion. And, and we all have, have, I guess, really tried to continue to honor Jim Beam as we've gone through our careers. I know I have and my dad and granddaddy definitely. Um, but so the whiskeys we've got, we've got a four-year-old with a tub. And I've got the package here, if you haven't seen it. So this is a very similar label to the, to the original label. <clears throat> Four years old, 100 proof. Um, so that's bottled and bond. And that's where I talk about that quality mark. The bottled and bond act uh, came into play where the government would regulate your whiskey making and watch it and make sure you were doing things uh, by regulation. And they would then give you a strip stamp that would go over top of your course. And that essentially was for the consumer. If it had this green uh, strip stamp, um, you as a consumer knew that, that that whiskey was not tampered with. Um, and so that's, that's what I meant by that on the tub. But at four years old and 100 proof, you're getting a great mix between some flavors that are coming from the barrel. 100% uh, of the color of the whiskey comes from the barrel. Uh, as you can see, it's got a nice amber color there. Um, a little bit lighter than, say, this this nine-year-old Knob Creek will go to. Um, but all that color comes from the barrel. Probably about 50% of the flavor at four years old. Um, so if you really get into the nose, you'll, you'll pick up a little bit of, of corn, maybe, maybe some hints of, like, creamed corn, really, really sweet. 
but also you'll you'll start to pick up some of those barrel sugars as well, and that becomes apparent with some like vanilla, uh, which is a compound vanillin. Uh, I really like this old tub. It, another thing is it's unfiltered. You know, in today's world, we do some filtering because if this whiskey was to get cold, it would appear to be kind of snotty and, and, and not appealing or appetizing. So for a lot of products, as the industry kind of died in the 60s and 70s, uh, we really went back and tried to improve the things that we thought could help. Um, that filtration does remove a little bit of flavor um, with kind of cleansing up the whiskey or polishing the whiskey and, and getting some compounds that fall out of solution out. Um, but with that, so you get a little more flavor that's coming from that barrel with this unfiltered at 100 proof. It's kind of funny that licks and lips I can that I'm doing there. Uh, a whiskey writer coined the term Kentucky Chew, and my grandfather would do that. Now, my grandfather was doing it because he wanted to involve his whole mouth in the tasting. He did that with everything he did, from food um, to, to you know beer. He liked to drink warm beer and would do that and really try to involve your whole palate. Because different pieces of your tongue and different parts of your mouth pick up different flavors differently. Uh, so by doing that, is it's called a Kentucky Chew there, where you just kind of smack your lips. Um, it's it's not the most like, appealing or appetizing thing if you're sitting at a t at a dinner table. Uh, but <clears throat> for a whiskey tasting, I think it's okay. Uh, my granddaddy definitely would say, "Hell yes, it's okay." It's, it's just seems to be, like I said, you're just kind of letting your whole mouth be involved in a tasting of the whiskey. As I said, I pick up a lot of sweetness from that corn coming through in the early parts and near the finish was kind of in the back of your, your throat and or, or back of your mouth and into your throat. Um, I start to pick up very little hints of that, that kind of coming through. Um, the one thing too, if you're doing a bourbon tasting, I don't know, everyone here is probably not a bourbon fan, uh, but if you're not a bourbon fan and you taste it and it's too hot uh, or you make a face, cut it down to what's pleasing to your palate. A lot of people say you got to drink it neat or on the rocks. I promise you, you can work your way to that. Um, it, it doesn't have to be so rough getting there either. You know, if you add a little bit of water, it really changes the complexity of the whiskey and starts to pull out more of those, those sweet notes um, that, that the people are, are much more attracted to. And as you develop your palate, the whiskey, you can pro you'll see yourself probably starting to put less water or maybe less ice. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with bourbon and Coke. It's funny, uh, you know, I get asked that a lot. Um, and my granddaddy had, a, had a, 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 an old lady one night said, Booker, no, I, I come to your tasting. I had one question. My son says it's it's, you know, sacrilegious for me to be drinking your bourbon, Booker's, you know, with a $50 bottle. So at that time, very expensive. Uh, cast rain, so very high proof. And she said, I drink that with Coke or sometimes Diet Coke if my sugar's out of balance a little bit. And I said, oh, man, I was worried about what your grandfather would say. But he looked at her and he said, if you take the world's best bourbon and you mix it with Coke, you just made the world's best bourbon and Coke. And he said, so in my opinion, you've been drinking the world's best bourbon and Coke because you use Booker's. Uh, so in our family, it's always been drink it any damn way you please and how it's pleasing to you. Uh, we kind of, like I said, we, we make it um, to be enjoyed. And if you're trying to enjoy it and it's unappealing to you, then try it in a different way. Cocktails are a great way um, to enjoy bourbon. Also, like I said, um, ice and water does a great great deal for cutting that flavor, but still giving you aspects of that barrel proof or, or cast, cast flavor um, versus a cocktail where it's much more kind of all encompassing. Um, so we'll kind of move on to the Knob Creek. It's a great tasting here because you have four year old 100 proof um, old tub. You have nine year old 100 proof Knob Creek. Here's the Nut Creek package. It's actually changing packages. 
Currently, so it's going to have a little bit smaller label on it. it may, you may see that out actually already. Um, but with that, at nine years old, so, you know, over two times as long in the barrel, a lot more color, as I was saying earlier, if you look at the, look at the glasses there. Um, and with that, it's just a lot of the aging here in Kentucky in the hot summers, uh, the whiskey uh, gets hot and pushes into the wood in the summer, or excuse me, in the wintertime, that wood gets cold and contracts and pushes the whiskey back out. And that's how we get all of our color. Nine years is a very long time to spend in a barrel. I think you put your nose right in this glass, you'll definitely start to pick up that Nella that I was hinting at on the old tub. I really think Knob Creek to me is a great, um, super premium bourbon. It's, it's well-priced in the $35 range. Um, there's not a lot of age statements left um, on the shelf. This one is one of them. And at the price point, it's definitely a, a good bargain. And the flavor is very complex. Uh, if you're looking for something that, like I said, brings more of that kind of from the barrel flavor, um, definitely vanillas, some caramels. Knob Creek holds up great in that Boulevardier cocktail I heard someone mention. Um, also in Manhattan in an old fashioned, Knob Creek does, does very, very well. So again, much more complexity. Um, it, it's almost confusing to your palate if you don't drink a lot of whiskey um, at cast or at higher strength. When you, when you go to something like this compared to that um, old tub, it's a, definitely a shift. It, it, it becomes much more of a brown, kind of darker, sweet, almost into a um, a lot of times some dried fruits as, as it becomes so much stringent from, from the uh, too much wood. Um, so there's a real shift in the flavor profile of whiskey from four to nine years old. And I think you can see that in these two products here. The good thing too about Knob Creek, as I said, Old Tub was a release we did this year. Knob Creek is, is readily available all the time. But if you do get a chance to try, you know, these two side by side, I think it's it's a great tasting to do because they're very similar in proof. Actually, they are the same proof. And then at that, that big age difference, it's really kind of showing you, you know, this was, was actually Old Tub, was probably the, the quality mark of bourbon for many, many years um, in the industry because our family was very synonymous and, and probably the most home family of, of bourbon makers from, from probably the, the late 1700s um, into the early 1800s, and then at that point, there were a lot more makers. But so that was a lot of the quality mark that people were probably trying to achieve in their distillery. I think you fast forward now, people are much more educated about bourbon. They're um, a little bit deeper into their kind of whiskey journey. So they're, so everyone, I think, is more in tune with the flavors of Knob Creek. And I would say Knob Creek at nine years and 100 proof is much more of, of closer to a great standard of high quality bourbon today. Not that four year old 100 proof old tub isn't, uh, but I think people are much more further along in their journey and they really like those, those older whiskeys. So I think a shift to this Knob Creek is, is great and comparing the two to me is amazing uh, tasting for, for, for beginners and connoisseurs. I think a lot of times a four year old 100 proof um, to me, that tastes like that old tub. It kind of roots you that there's good whiskey at young ages, and then you come back with the Knob Creek, and it really shows you that that, that you can't really replicate time in the barrel um, and developing a lot of deep, true flavor. Uh, the old tub can be found at liquor stores very sparingly across the country. Um, it's been out probably about four months. We did a limited run of it this year. You may see some more of it coming through uh, towards closer towards the holiday. So keep your eye out as you, and I was going to say, if you've got a Benny's, that is definitely a great, great spot to, to hit old tub for. So liquor store picks are a new thing soon. We haven't necessarily got into doing those yet. We're, we're talking about doing some baker's picks. 
Um, there was never a Booker's pick. So Booker's is always going to be a batched barrel program um, because granddaddy did not like single barrel. And a lot of the reason for that is because he listened to his grandfather, Jim Beam, preach about these quality marks and, and making sure to continue the quality and, and, and consistency of our brands much because, like I said before, there weren't a lot of quality marks in the industry before. Uh, so granddaddy thought single barrel, while it's very unique in today's world and people really like the, the kind of variation of flavor, my grandfather, um, he liked the consistency of flavor and said, you, you don't want to give consumers that variation. Obviously, he was talking about a much smaller demographic and one that we were trying to educate and grow to. Would he be into single barrel today? Possibly, uh, but but for for us, Booker's will always be a batch system because it was about picking the barrels um, when they were right or ripe and bringing them together to make a batch of, of great whiskey out of the cross section or center cut and cross section of our warehouses. So the knob 12 single barrel and small batch our regular label says small batch, but if we do a single barrel run, which is, was a limited run on that 12 year, there is that, that possibility. Also, if you buy a uh, Knob Creek single barrel, <clears throat> a lot of times it may say that same statement on there, uh, but it may probably say single barrel on there as well, as you're saying. And then the 12 is probably a reference to the actual age of the barrel bought versus um, all Knob Creek single barrel is nine year minimum, but um, some of them do get maybe even 14 or 15 years old. Um, yeah, our, that's funny. Uh, just to kind of close it up, someone said our corporate office is in Chicago. It is. I spend probably two or three days there, um, maybe up to a week, a quarter in normal world, but uh, during COVID world, um, I have not traveled to Chicago. The, my last travel is I do travel a lot and get around and, and taste, meet people in liquor stores and, and, and hopefully some restaurants and bars as well. Um, you know, but this year has been a little bit different. My last trip was actually in February, as you all were talking about your, your, your dinner was then as well. I was actually in Japan with the Suntory team, which is the, the Suntory side of the Beam Suntory. Um, learning about Japanese whiskey and sharing some best practices. Uh, I guess I will answer this one because I do get it a lot. Uh, the last one for the night. Thank you all again for, for your support. Um, if you have any questions and, and hopefully sometime you guys can get down to Kentucky. Our distillery is usually open for tours um, and, and we'd love to show you around our place and, and have a nice drink. And I'll hopefully meet up with some of you folks as I get out in my travels as well. But the last question was, if I could not drink a beam product, um, that one's probably pretty easy just because of how close we are with the family, the Russells at Wild Turkey. Um, Granddaddy and Jimmy were very, very close as they traveled the world, kind of as, as was said by, by Carmen earlier. It'd probably be a dead industry if it wasn't for the two of them. And, and he is spot on by saying that. Um, it, it, I, but their whiskey to me is very similar to ours in the style that they use. I know the care and craftsmanship they use there. Um, so no brainer for me would probably go wild turkey. And then a close second, my, my cousins at Heaven Hill. <laughs> Freddie, thanks, man. Seriously. Anytime, anytime. Thank awesome. Man. It's so cool. We appreciate it. Um, what can you say? I mean, that was such a cool demonstration to see, uh, kind of just talking through the family history and how Freddie tastes and um, the legend of his, his dad and his granddad. I mean, just amazing stuff. So we really appreciate your time. It means a lot. All right, buddy? See you, bro. Cheers. All Thank right, you. everybody. Cheers. I mean, that pretty much puts a wrap on things. I'll just say a few. Um, I'm going to say a few thank yous one more time to everybody. Um, first of all, thank you to everybody that decided to join the Zoom tonight. few technical glitches, but I, I think we made it. Uh, by and large, it was really successful. And thank you for being a part of this. I can only say that, uh, fingers crossed, we'll all be back together again, uh, 350 or 400 of us uh, at Binney's. We've got times on our side now, right? We've got a whole year. So 
Uh, let's hope we're all back together next November. This is becoming an annual thing uh, every November uh, at Benny's. We had to do it this way this year. So thank you for understanding, cooperating, being part of this, helping us to raise money. Again, I, I know I don't think um, uh, Hannah, I talked to Hannah yesterday and, and I won't reveal the number because I, I just don't think I'm supposed to, but I'm, I'm blown away um, by the support and what we were able to raise going into tonight. Um, considering we can't all be together and that you were all so generous uh, to, to join us and to donate and to be part of this. Uh, it really means a lot. If, if you listen to the radio station and you've heard me or the other shows, Waddle and Sylvie or, or Cap and Hoodie over the years or Freddie or Black and Abella talk about this event um, and that's how you found out and that's why you decided to come and support the cause. Thank you. Um, so many of you come each and every year and I appreciate it to family and friends and all of you that bring your family and friends uh, into this thing. Uh, what it's grown into is truly amazing. And we're all so appreciative. Those of us that uh, have a personal or direct connection to CF, everybody at the foundation. Thanks again to our sponsors. Not possible without you. Thanks to Dude Wipes for always supporting us for the second straight year. Um, Morgan Harbor Construction, George Olmos. Thank you, my brother. Uh, so great of you. Jen and Rob McClary, and you heard from Jen tonight. She's a rock star. Um, thank you guys for your support. Stuart um, and his whole family. I mean, Andrew and Brad and everything that they've done over the years for us. I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that I think that kind of wraps it. Um, thanks again to Benny's. I mean, for and even with even though we weren't there this year, um, to still have your support and to have the partnership is great. And thanks to American Airlines. You see all the sponsors there on the screen. If you want to donate, you know, you can look for those emails. You can bid for a cure. You can uh, get with those videos like I was talking about from Bill Curtis and then the, the, the trifecta, the three pack from me and from Yurko and from Waddle. If you want to do that, it's 50 bucks. It's all tax deductible. So listen, everybody, thank you. Uh, I can't say it enough. Uh, we'll see you next year. Have a great holiday season. Uh, stay safe. Do the best through all this. Hannah, I hope I'm not forgetting. Tyler, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I don't think I am. Thanks again to Nick Nagley from Whiskey Acres. I thought that was a really cool presentation, how you saw from seed to spirit and everything that goes into that. There was an amazing fact about that. I think it was that the, the, the I mean, I'm not smart enough to know all the different uh, terms. What is that one that actually harvests the grain? It has more code written into it than a 747. That's amazing. Uh, Greg Butera, thank you. His expertise in cocktail making and Maker's Mark, that was really cool. And to Freddie No. Just fabulous. So thank you, everybody. Um, be well. Love you. Thanks for the support all these years. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time, right? Good night, everybody.